Chair. Ms Finlay. Uh, Minister, regularly uh, from yourself and including Minister Ferguson last night, um, there's a reference of the thousands of jobs that are created in regional communities around Tasmania, around our fisheries sector. Um, my question to you specifically is a short and direct question. Is it the current policy of government to um, seek efficiency in our fisheries or to provide for jobs in regional and rural Tasmania? You're talking about the salmon industry in no, fisheries. In particular. Yes. The principle is that they are a sustainable fishery first and foremost. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, of course, the the primary concern needs to be um, sustainability of our fisheries, um, and it's in ensuring that our fisheries are sustainable um, that we do secure thousands of jobs in rural and regional Tasmania. Um, we don't have any jobs if we don't sustainably manage our fisheries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, they, they so they actually, they work together. They work together. Okay, but through you, Chair, to the Minister, the question is not about sustainability, that's a given. We all here <laughs> want sustainability in the fisheries. The question is, is the government seeking efficiency in the way fish are fished or um, to ensure that there are ongoing jobs in rural and regional Tasmania for fishers? We want to have a sustainable fishery and that is how you secure jobs. Have a policy in of efficiency. What's the question? She's no, not answering Ms, the question. Ms. Finlay, I can't, uh, no, I can't ask the minister to answer a question in a certain okay. way. So can you please just listen in silence while the minister answers the question? Thank you, minister. Thank you very much for that, Chair. Um, I think I will refer this question to Dr Dutton. Thank you. But three minutes before, minutes, oh, before sorry. Dr Dutton... Sorry, apologies. Before Dr Dutton starts, the Living Marine Resource Management Act actually sits under the Resource Management and Planning System, which has objectives around the Resource Management and Planning System, which is about promoting sustainable development of natural physical resources, fair and orderly sustainable use, encourage public involvement, facilitate economic development, provide the sharing of responsibility... So, it, so whilst the Living Marine Resource Management Act sits under that framework, it's important to remember that that's about balance. But for you, Minister, Dr Dutton couldn't explain Question either. Thank you, uh, Minister, and through you to the Honourable Member. I, look, this is a complex matter because there's, there's a lot of debate going on in Australian society, as you would be aware, Ms Finley, in regards to things like in, uh, individual transferable quotas. There's been an inquiry into those recently that's found a range of viewpoints exist about efficiency versus social benefit as some of the trade-offs. There's been work done through our colleagues at the Institute for Marine Antarctic Studies around this, a range of perspectives. As the Deputy Secretary indicated, my job is to manage our fisheries in accordance with our primary legislation, the Living Resource Management Act. In the course of consulting about the review of that Act, there's been a number of positions put to us by diverse stakeholders about exactly the question you're covering. Mm -hmm. We have not landed an, a different position uh, at this stage, but I'm trying to manage in my role a contribution to that existing framework as, as the Deputy Secretary indicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so taking from that answer then, there's an understanding of the difference, thank you, yes. between efficiency and social um, benefit. And at this stage, the government isn't seeking to move towards a policy of more efficiency or more social benefit. Where are you sitting on the scales of that at the moment? We really... Sorry. Through Excuse Minister. me. That's <laughs> we could talk a lot. <laughs> Through you, Minister, uh, we are doing a lot of analysis on this. It's a topical question globally. It's been an issue wow. in most fisheries, and exactly. And uh, you know, coming from Alaska, as I did, where, for example, there's been an, an allocation in the Bering Sea fisheries for example, towards community development quotas, looking at who benefits out of a fishery and how they benefit. Um, but one of the things that we are introducing specifically, and there's been a consultation recently around our harvest strategy approaches, the only fishery we currently have a harvest strategy for is abalone and we are currently working that through into the rock lobster fishery this year, as you may be aware, and there's a commitment under the recreational sea fishing strategy and other documents to another dozen or so fisheries where this harvest strategy, where these issues will be brought to the fore. It's been something that's really been a little unclear in our management settings historically, and it's best practice yeah, in Australia now is that for these harvest strategies to guide this allocation question, to guide the, the settings. I notice um, through you, Chair, 
Minister, um, I noticed the um, paper that's distributed around the development of the harvest strategy indicates that that list of harvest strategies will be developed over the next 10 years. Um, obviously, there's a priority in the review of the Living Marine Resources Act and the harvest strategies for them to work together to make sense for making these decisions. Um, does the Minister believe that you have enough resources to do that work with priority to ensure that we're protecting our fisheries? You talk about sustainability because over 10 years is a long time and there's a little bit of chicken and egg between the living, the review of the Living Marine Resources Act and the harvest strategies and we obviously need to make sure that we get that right. Yes, so you will see that there is funding um, in the budget for... Previous for budget. The yeah. previous budget, sorry, for that work to be done. My question specifically was around, we were talking about harvest strategies and uh, the document says that it will happen over 10 years. That's a long time for the um, protection of the sustainability of our fishing resources. Do you believe you've got enough resources, enough allocation to get that work done to protect our fisheries? Well, I've just answered that question and told you that it has been funded through a previous budget. My question so is, do you think there's enough to protect the Ms. fisheries? Ms Finlay, Ms Finlay, can you let the Minister please finish your answer? That was finished. And then I ask another question. Yes, so I, I really think I have answered the all right, question. All right, sorry. Um, so moving into specific questions about the rock lobster fishery, again, I have asked these questions of your minister, but at this stage haven't had answers. Can you um, rule out implementing multiple night shots in the rock lobster fishery? That was a question that you did put in the Legislative Council and I did answer You it. said that you'd get back to me... Um, uh, we had a, you said that uh, you will seek some data, you thank me for the question, the level of detail is complex and that you would respond. Uh, so I did respond in the last sitting week Have you to ruled um, out the Honourable um, Sarah Lovell who asked that question and, I, yeah, so that You've has ruled out been multiple night shots. Too. Have you ruled out multiple, multiple night shots? Do you remember what your answer was? <coughs> Chair, I'll just seek some advice. do is we'll seek to provide you with the answer that was provided mm. in the Upper House last week, but I will just see if Dr Dutton has anything he can add there. Oh, that's, that's, the best, that's the best approach, Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we did, did, we did, did that before the end of the session. We did, yes. Yeah. I'm up. Um, All right. I'll hand to Mr Young now. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Minister, can you please provide the committee with an update on any major program outputs from the Shell Map Industry Market Access Program? Thank you very much for the question. Um, our government runs Shell Map to ensure Tasmania's incredible shellfish are enjoyed safely in Tasmania and indeed around the world uh, because shellfish are filter feeders and often eaten raw or indeed lightly cooked. Um, there are increased food safety risks to be managed. Uh, Shell Map operates under a partnership agreement between government and Oyster Tasmania and the Tasmanian Seafood Industry Council. Uh, the Tasmanian oyster industry is known globally for its high quality product and we want to continue supporting our farmers to be innovative and resilient. The new agreement was signed in 2021 with more than $1 million committed to collaborative industry development and research projects. And last year's budget also included funding for $400,000 over four years to support ShellMap through the provision of a program coordinator to enable more effective delivery of a range of important projects under the agreement. I recently had the pleasure of launching a major priority project um, that has been delivered under the partnership agreement, uh, supports industry and management of food safety through a $1.25 million oyster sensor network integrated dashboard and grower handbook. Um, the sensor network array is being rolled out on oyster farms across 30 growing areas and 50 harvest zones uh, in the state. It will deliver high resolution, real-time salinity, temperature and tide data to better inform management of shellfish areas and support better regulatory management of food safety. The majority of sensors are now installed with a program of routine maintenance and monitoring underway. Uh, in 
conjunction with the sensor network, a shell point data port portal has been developed, uh, with display, which displays live feeds from the sensors, uh, information from the shell map program, and importantly, um, rainfall and river flow data as well. So hand in hand with the rollout of new technology is the extension work with our oyster farmers, which has included the production of the Tasmanian Shellfish Grower Handbook uh, by Oysters Tasmania. Now that handbook uh, provides useful contact information, um, references on sample collection um, and handling and management of growing areas. It also outlines the Department of Natural Resources and Environment Tasmania's requirements for the management of marine farming leases. Importantly, it is the first time this information has been published in one document for oyster growers. Uh, these outputs highlight the importance of stakeholder collaboration in delivering outputs that benefit industry as uh, a whole and the management and regulation uh, of food safety. Yeah. Dr Woodruff. 